Baseball at its best. We'll see the Chicago White Sox as they play against the Cleveland Indians. At your home for Major League Baseball, 2K Sports. How to describe him? Well, how about as a winner? Mark Burley, he'll be putting his stuff on display here today. Line up for the White Sox. Let's take a look. It is courtesy of Pepsi. Now, John, anyone in particular we should keep an eye on? Well, the potential's all there for Carlos Quentin to step up and be a star. This guy has it written all over him. He's trying to work on his consistency, though. Sometimes his batting average dips down too low. But I tell you what. And so Johnny Damon leads it off. The White Sox won last night. They put together win after win. Now they got seven in a row going. Now oh, this club's just lost one of their last ten ball games. You talk about a hot team. This is it. Starting out first inning of baseball, 0-1. And that one loss came on the road. This right now is a very tough team to beat. Well, when you win on the road, you have to have everything working, especially the pitching and the defensive end. But what you have to do offensively, you have to cash in when you get scoring opportunities, and they're doing it. Good cutter. Swung out and missed for the first out. His pitches complement one another. They work off of each other. And he used a tremendous sequence right there. One, two, three, strike out. See you later. And uh, in the batter's box, it's Ramirez. And Alexi Ramirez was a guy who struck. That one's lined softly towards the gap left center. And Cabrera gloves that one. It looked like he was on it, but he just didn't quite center it. Just ends up being a soft liner to the shortstop. That's it foul by Conurco. And the 0-1 by Westbrook. Oh! Conurco fouls off another. Oh! And he fouls another one off. The pitch from Westbrook. Oh! And another foul ball. And that's another foul ball. Canarco fouls off another. Well, that's a great piece of hitting right there. Anytime you've had an at-bat that lasts this long, you still want to try to hit the fastball, so you foul off this breaking ball right here to stay alive. Oh! And he fouls off another one. This one swung on line towards the middle. And that's going to do it in this half inning. Good defensive half inning there. No hits allowed. First look at the Cleveland Bats coming right up. Mark Burley is going to be pitching. He gets settled in for Chicago. Steve, as he gets into this Cleveland lineup, what's he looking at? Now Mark Burley has made a living on working quickly. He tries to keep the hitters off balance, and he works at his own pace, which is quick. It keeps the defense in the game behind him, and he throws all of his pitches for strikes. To left center, and he's on. That's a nice way to jumpstart your offense. This one finds its way around, rolling all the way to the wall. And he pulls into second base. That will be a double. You get to take a look at one here that probably should have ended at first base. Well, he had the burners on coming out of the batter's box and rounding first base. Great aggressiveness on his part. He didn't let up, and he gets in safely. No indecision when he got the first base. That's how you get in safely to second. Now here's a grounder towards the hole. Well, the most effective pitch in baseball is a pitch down and away in the strike zone. And this guy here, though, he's made a living throughout his career being able to hit that pitch, and he does it again right here. It's going to be Laporta now. One for four, lifetime against Mike Burley. That'll be a base hit at an RBI. Now batting. What more do you need to see? Now you have to question his confidence, giving up three straight hits. Not much going right out there at this point. Shinsu Chu looks to knock in a run. 
Well, they've done themselves quite a job here. This is a nice push at this point of the ball game to get out in front. And Gary, you can never underestimate the importance of an early lead. It can allow the pitcher to go right at the hitters and pitch with confidence. 0 oh, and 1. Burley kicks and delivers. Well, he couldn't keep that under control. He'll hit a guy and put him on base. I know he didn't want to do that. That's going to load things up. It's hit foul by Peralta. And good eye there by Johnny Peralta to even the count. Swung on, hit. Oh, off the pitcher. Wow, that was a hot shot, and he couldn't get out of the way. And Cabrera will score, and they won't be able to get him. Everybody's safe. Well, the pitcher's got to be thinking to himself, what do I have to do to get an out? That's now four straight hits he's given up. And it'll be Valbuena standing in to hit. And when you got the bases loaded like this, this is the opportunity you look for in a game. It may not come again. Well, when you have a lead, you want to keep adding to it. A big opportunity here to spread the margin. Bases are loaded and nobody out. Ball. Cutter misses badly. One and zero. Oh. Batting average for him last season: 280 against the White Sox. One zero one. Oh pitch, change up in there. One and one. Now coming off a good ball game last night, picking up two hits in that one. Nope, that one not in there. Burley misses. 2-1 pitch. Swung on, grounded towards the hole. And there's one. Back to first, not in time. Not quick enough on the relay. Number 23, Michael Brantley. Well, even though he had two hits in the last game, his team lost. But he keeps swinging a bat like this. Good things are going to happen. First pitch is a cutter. Looked at 0-1. Now, if you want to make a run at the playoffs and win a division title, you have to be competitive within your division. And that's just something the Indians did not do in 2009. Here's the delivery. A little too much action there, and it's 2-1. and one. For the Indians against their own division, they were 12 games under 500, including a really disastrous season, 4-14 four and 14 against the Tigers. Well, yeah, I mean, besides Kansas City, they had a 10-8 and eight record for them, but they still tied for the bottom of the division with Kansas City. But... They were just not going to be a competitive team. They had too many injuries. They had too many guys underachieving. And they have, they have some guys signed for multi-year that were underachieving players. This is going to be a process that the Cleveland Indians fans are going to have to accept. And hopefully in two or three years, they can come back to the glory that they had in the 90s. You know, John, I'm not convinced it's going to take that long because this isn't a division with any sort of a powerhouse team. They're all kind of muddled together a little bit there. So I think there's room for the Indians to get back into it quickly, maybe even this year. Fastball just misses, and he falls behind 2-0. He's ready. Now the 2-0. That is a ball, now 3-0. and oh. Let's see if Kearns wants to try and drive one here. 273, the lifetime number off the White Sox. And he'll step on the back. That'll do it. And a great way to start in the first. They get three runs off a bad pitching start. Cleveland is out on top, 3 to nothing. Big. Leading it off, Carlos Quinton. White Sox. Right fielder, number 20, Carlos Quinton. The pitch from Westbrook. Fouled away. Strike two. Now with no balls, two strikes. Quinton needs to protect that strike zone. Well, looking back to last night's game, a major contribution offensively. It went deep. Nice job. Well, he finished that one off with a strikeout. Nice pitch. And Beckham's in the box. You talk about Gordon Beckham and the fact that in his rookie season he hit 270 in 2009. That tells you that this kid has a lot of discipline at the plate. Not in front on that one. Strike one. 
Beckham uh, made his debut in June and it certainly didn't take long for him to be recognized around the major. Which certainly did and you talk to White Sox personnel and they think that he could be a guy that they can build a team around. And that one swung on a miss by Gordon Beckham. Well with two strikes on the hitter he went with the heat. I tell you what a fastball in the low 90s still very very effective. got the bat on that one and Sizemore's there and that one's put away to retire the side nothing doing here in this Marson's in the batter's box he's going to start the second for the home team hard grounded a short and Ramirez feels the ball over to Canerco one away Number 24. And Brady Sizemore up. Well, one area the Chicago White Sox are looking to see some improvement over 2009 is, is their team defense has got to get better. That's it. Pretty well down the line and left. Damon. And he's able to put it away. And the White Sox defensively, 113 errors, second worst in the American League. You are not going to win baseball games when you're giving up all those extra chances. And outs. Well, no, not in that division and not in any division, especially in the American League where the DH is, is so prevalent because the more at bats you let these good hitters get the top of the order, the middle of the orders, you keep turning the lineup over by making errors, the more chance your pitchers are going to give up a lot of runs. And that's what happened to this Chicago White Sox team in 2009. Well, John, in addition to the defense, I mean, they're off. Line softly to center field. And that one is in there, his second hit today. Well, with two outs and no one on base, chance of scoring a run seems pretty scarce, but they get that two out hit. Now they have some life. It's going to be Laporta now. A one for four last year against Burrow. Ball! And that swung on and hit. Rios. And that gets through for a base hit. He throws. Now Cleveland, here's the chance they want. Well, speed is a two-way tool. We talked about how it helps on defense. Now you see how it helps on the base pass as he barrels around going into third base. Burley with a delivery. Ball. Fastball, too low, 1-0. Oh. Fastball, low, 2-0. A two-seam fastball is such an effective pitch. One, because it gets ground ball outs, but two, it ball sets three. up his other pitches. Lays off the changeup high, and it's 3-0. and oh. He had great arm motion on that changeup right there, but he left it just a little bit high. Now the 3-1. Three and three and the fastball is over, 3-2 and two now. He looked like he was looking for a pitch out over the plate. That fastball down and in locked him up a little bit. Oh. Count holds at 3-2. A swing and a fly ball to left center field. And it falls in there. Indians to pick up a run. Boy, this lineup, they are hot right now. The chances, they are productive. Well, patience and tenacity paid off right there. The ability to stay alive and in that bat, they gave him a chance and gave his team a chance to get that run, and that's what he did with that big... Lined up the middle, fielded by Ramirez. Nope. Throws on to first in time to retire the side. So they scratch across a run, three hits and a couple left on. It's a four-run lead for Cleveland. Good spot to be in. Latter third of the lineup coming up. A look at the manager, Ozzie Guillen. His club did not get out to the start they had hoped for. A long ways to go to get back. The pitch from Westbrook. He waved at that breaker and misses. And an 0-1 count. Oh, what a great curveball right there. You see how he fooled the hitter and got him way out in front. And that's a strike. A.J. Przinski now behind on the count. Defensive stance at the plate. Hit hard on the ground to short. Fielded by Cabrera. At the plate. And so Brzezinski retired. Let's take a chance now to take a look at where the White Sox sit today in the rankings in the American League. First in batting average. First in batting average with runners in scoring position. 
and they're also number one in ERA. Their pitching staff getting it done better than everybody else right now. You limit the run scored, you give yourself a chance to win. And here's Mark Tian in the top ten in hits. And he pulls into first base with that base hit. There's one down here. It's going to be Nick's now. Only a 178 career average against Cleveland. That one swung on, hit in the air deep to left field. And it's off the wall and left. Fantastic chance here. And it's Johnny Damon. Johnny Damon was a key cog for the New York Yankees in 2009, helped leading them to a world championship. You look at the at bats, he got on base, he hit home runs, he drove in runs, he scored runs. He's a complete offensive player. Big three run homer. Now they're only one run behind. That one brings home three and our Pepsi WPA chart shows us how it adds to their chances. Well he went up there deciding he was going to look for the first pitch and drive it. It's exactly what he did. And then you got to believe whatever pitch he was looking for is the one he got. And a lot of hitters like to take a pitch work the count get into a rhythm with the pitcher. Not this guy he got the but first one and drove the it. Now, Gary they need to continue to score but already Alexi the White Sox Ramirez. have some momentum and they've drawn close. Well hit towards the middle. And so Ramirez retired. And it's Paul Canerco now. He's the league leader in ribbies. Swing and a miss on the cutter. 0 and 1. Such a consistent, productive, professional hitter. You know, one of their best bats in the lineup, Gary. That's it foul by Canerco. The pitch from Westbrook. And that's another foul ball. Well, you can tell right there that the batter is in protection mode. Anything close, he's just trying to put it in play. The fact that he fouled it off will keep this at bat going. Well, that half inning uh, came to a close. A strikeout ended it. So they come back to score three times here in the inning and pull a little closer. And it'll be Valbuena standing in to hit. Drove in a run earlier in the game. Here's the first pitch. Oh. Curveball misses badly, 1 and 0. Look at the lifetime numbers 280 against the White Sox. Oh. Lost the grip on that cutter, and it's a 2 0 count. Strike. Good action to that cutter. Called strike 2 and 1. And you can throw the ball down in the zone with that kind of movement, it can be very effective. And that swung on and hit Rios and it falls in there for a base hit. Let's take a moment to look at the staffs leading the way ERA brought to you by State Farm. The White Sox number one second the Mariners in third the A's fourth the Red Sox and for the Orioles they are fifth. Well this whole staff seems to be in shutdown mode and it doesn't matter if it's the starter the reliever or the closer these guys are all getting the job done it makes it so much easier on your offense when you know you don't have to score eight to ten runs to win a game that fastball is in for a strike two and one when you can hit your spot with that kind of movement down and into the hitter you're way ahead of the game and he's got it now and a double play they got a both. Here's a look, 4 6 3 on the double play. Now that's the way they teach you whether you're at second base or shortstop. One fluid motion, get it out of the glove and get rid of it. And we've got Kearns batting in his ninth season. Base is empty and two down. Burley with a delivery. This one's grounded wow. near third. Foul. He delivers. Now here's a grounder towards the hole. Throws to first in time. That's three down. So no runs on one hit and nobody left on. 
Indians four, the White Sox three. Leading it off, Carlos Quinton, 0 for 1 thus far. Number 20, Carlos Quinton. First pitch to Quinton. A fly ball. And a foul ball. That ball is belted deep to left center field. Ball is on its way. And they're happy to tie that one up. Back to an even ball game with that solo shot. Well, he looked like he got the pitch in his wheelhouse and he just drove it out of the ballpark. When you get behind in a ball game, you want to get back early, get your get your mental set back, and they've done that. Well, this inning isn't over yet. They have a chance to still tack on some more runs. Now, now credit the White Sox the offense White Sox. attacking, Second trying to do what they can to bring this thing back, evening Jordan. it up. Tie game now. Let's see if they can add on some more runs, Gary. Cut fastball, swung on and missed, 0-1. And you know the, the manager likes to see this game, uh, especially with a great bat right at here. bat like we just saw. Well, I, I mean, and the message in the dugout for the manager is take advantage of the opportunities. When you get a shot, capitalize on it, and that's what they're doing. Now, coming to Swing and a miss okay, on the sinker, one away. Big, big break on this pitch. The clock's in at 89 miles per hour. That's a lot of break for that harder pitch. One out, and Alex Rios at the plate. And the 2009 season was a big disappointment for Alex Rios, starting out with the Toronto Blue Jays and then continuing on when he got traded to the Chicago White Sox at the trade deadline. Things just didn't get better in either place. Westbrook delivering the strike 0 2, maybe a K. Or uh, Rios, just a 247 batting average last year. Nobody expected that. Out. No, not at all. And this is a guy who's a former All Star. If you looked at him in Toronto and you thought we can build a team around him in Toronto, it just didn't work out. The pitch from Westbrook. That ball is belted deep left center. That ball is way back there. Gone a home run. And a solo home run. They lead by one. Well, the pitcher's going to have to make some adjustments right now, Gary. That's the third home run he's given up in this game. The hitters have figured out some kind of sequence they're queuing on. Now, good hitting coaches help the hitters do that. Hey! And out on the mound, we've got David Huff. They've decided it's time to bring a new arm into this one. Well, this wasn't the type of start the pitcher wanted or the manager wanted or his team wanted. Now they've got to see if the bull up the middle. And it gets through two for two. And now the hottest now hitters of late on base percentage wise over the last 10 games are State Farm leaderboard. These guys really understand the nature of the game. They understand that they cannot help the pitcher retire them. They force the pitcher to throw it over the plate. They can put it in play and get a base hit or they'll take a walk. Now the first pitch. Fastball swung out of miss. 0 and 1. Oh, he just swung late on that one. That's what you call getting gassed up. He's wishing he laid off that one, a strike and a pitch in the dirt. Slider swung on and missed, struck him out. That's going to retire the side. So they get the long ball working as they have two solo homers in this half of the inning. And if you are just coming on board, Gary Thorne, Steve Phillips, John Cruck, as we bring you Major League Baseball here on 2K Sports. First pitch on the way. Swing and a shot to third. Over to Canerco. One away. And as May winds down, let's see how the standings are in the Central Division, courtesy of State Farm. First place, the White Sox. In second place, it's the Royals. Twins in the third spot. Fourth place, the Indians. And rounding out the list, the Tigers. Not a lot of expectations in Chicago this year, but the White Sox surprising everybody sitting atop of the American League Central right now and, and building that confidence level. And Brady Sizemore up. Well, if the Cleveland Indians are going to have any chance of competing in 2010, their best player, Grady Sizemore, has swung and a ground ball to third. 
Over to Canerco. Two away. And Cabrera settles in. Two for two in the game. And here's the first one. Slider stays inside. One ball, no strikes. Last year, just one for 11 off Mark Burley. Burley with a delivery. Two zero on the way. Swings and hits this one. Going to be fielded by Rios. And that's going to do it in this half inning. No hits, nobody left on. And a good defensive half inning. The White and it's Johnny Damon now. He homered earlier in the ball game. It's nice to have a bat like this in the lineup because as you're going through the game, you know you've got a chance to score runs every time he comes to the plate. Hits it out of the ballpark. He's driving the ball. He's doing a little bit of everything. Nice shatters his bat. A line drive. And so Damon retired. We're breaking the action here. Let's look at the hit leaders on our State Farm leaderboard. And it's Alexei Ramirez now, one away. I was going to have some confidence in this one. Three hits in the game last night. Must be seeing the ball well. Headed for the middle. Whoa, get out of the way of that one. Straight back up the middle. And that'll bring up Paul Canerco. Well, Alexei Ramirez has seized it so far. Let's take a look at where he ranks compared to everybody else. Third in doubles, fourth in hits. Uh, he, you'll notice he's also ranked in the top five in batting average. The guy that puts it in play, finds holes, and finds a way to get himself on base. Well, the oh. thing about Paul Canerco now at this stage in his career is he'll play a lot of games at first base, but when he needs a break, he can go to that DH role. He's not a guy that's going to steal oh. any bases. He has hardly any speed left, but he's a run producer in the middle of that lineup and a leader in that clubhouse. Canerco certainly hard ground at a short. Yeah. Over to second for one. And that's two. A double play. No runs, one hit, and no one left on base. White Sox five, Indians four. You're looking there at Manny Active. And some good pitching last inning. He now hopes to get the necessary offense going, get him going in the right direction. And Burley gets it by, called strike, and the count will go to 0-1. But Gary, these hitters are really now going to have to focus on his changeup. It is his best pitch, and it is one of the best around. Oh, and he lays off the fastball. Good pitch, 1-1. You, know, you talk about how do you approach this changeup, Gary. Well, I'll tell you what, it's very, very difficult as a hitter. Because if you look changeup, then the fastball is going to beat you. But if you try to speed up for the fastball, then you're way out in front on the changeup. Swing and a miss. That's a changeup. Down on strikes, 1-0. Let's see this one again in KK. Change up. Oh, a fantastic strikeout pitch here. It's headed down and in, and the batter just didn't time this thing right. He never had a chance on this one. Absolutely right, John. And as in real estate, it's all about location. And here's the first one. Swing, soft liner towards left center. And that gets the tying run on board. He's trying for second. The throw. And he's in at second with a double, one up. Well, this pitch right here catches way too much of the plate, and he absolutely demolishes it. Let's see what they want to do here with one out and a base open. And Johnny Peralta up. For his career, 227 off the white side. That a swing and a miss by Peralta, and that'll knock the count up. Well, I tell you what, for two-seam fastball, he had some good movement and good pop on that one. Batter swung late. That's one. And he's going to hang on to it. No relay. So they will not get the double play. And it'll be Baldwena standing in to hit. One for two in the ballgame. Burley with a delivery. Fastball runs inside. One and oh. Swing and a ball line softly down the line in right. And that is in there. The go ahead run on board. Peralta keeps running. Safe at second. He gets in there. Plenty of time. And he comes home. That's it. We are tied. Cleveland continuing to deliver big offense. 
Michael. See how much that triple adds to the win expectancy. Our Pepsi WPA graph. And Brantley's in the box. Well, Steve, as this offense come through in a big way, now they're gaining some confidence. Now, Gary, we just saw a quality at bat right there. That's some clutch hitting. They needed the big hit. They got it, and now we're tied. Burley's pitch taken for a strike. One and one. Did they ever? And with that, Steve, uh, as they say, we've got ourselves a brand new ball game. Well, this keeps things a little bit interesting now, doesn't it? Yeah. Good spot for the changeup that time. One and two. The one two is a fastball inside. Two and two. Change up swung on and missed. That will retire the side. So they score once on two hits, one man left. Ball game tied here in Cleveland. And Quinton settles in. Hit a home run in his last at bat. Here's the delivery. Swing and a miss, and he's behind that pitch. 0-1. Four for 20 last year against the Indians. There's a swing and a liner towards the gap in left field. Can't cut it off. It's going to roll to the wall. Stops at second. Two back. Well, great hitters get hits at just the right time. And this double right here with no one down is a nice leadoff hit to get the offense rolling early here in this inning. A smash towards the hole, and that's out number one as he takes it to the bag. Quickly, let's check out the league leaders in runs batted in brought to you by State Farm. All of these guys have one thing in common. With the game on the line with runners on base, they come through in the clutch and deliver and drive in the big runs. And he starts Rios out. Drilled towards the hole, and the play made by Laporta. And that will not get the runner home from third base. Well, showdown moment in this game right now, Gary, with A.J. Pruszynski coming to the plate. He loves these sorts of situations. We'll see if he can get it done right here. Drove in a run earlier in the game. Swings at that fastball and misses. 0-1. He's gotten a hit four out of six times against David Huff. And that's a strike. A.J. Pruszynski now behind on the count. Defensive stance at the plate. Now two strikes on the hitter. Hit hard on the ground to short. He'll throw on to first, and that'll do it for this half inning. They get a man to third, but can't bring him home. Still tied up here in Cleveland. And it's Austin Kearns. Blake, he'll lead off the bottom half of the sixth. Austin Kearns. Kearns settles in, ready to go for his pitch. And this is bounced foul to the left side. Ball and Austin Kearns watching that one go by. Count is even. Well, he had a contribution last night offensively as he drove in a couple of runs. Foul ball behind home plate. And he fouls another one off. Well, you know the pitcher wants to get this strikeout right here, but the last thing he wants to do when he's ahead in the count is make a mistake. And Smash towards the hole, and Conurco makes the catch. Our State Farm leaderboard, teams who have great control, not blocking people. Number one, the White Sox. The Royals in second. Third, the Mariners. Fourth, the Twins. And for the Blue Jays, they are in fifth. Will you ask any manager and any oh. pitching coach in baseball the one thing they really hate to see, and that's putting guys on base without having to swing the bat? Well, this team does it. On the ground to third. Tian. In time for the up. For the Cleveland Indians. Center fielder. Number two. And Brady Sizemore up. Right there in the top five in home runs. And he starts Sizemore out. And Burley gets it by, called strike, and the count will go to 0-1. Well, one of the offensive leaders in the game this year, and I was... Back up the middle. It is through, and the go-ahead runs on board. 
And Ramirez steals the ball. So Estrella Cabrera will come up. He flew out his last time up. Puts a little pressure on the defense and on the pitcher right now. Speed at first base, tie game. You've got to hold him close, but you can't be distracted. You still have to go after the hitter. Burley with a delivery. Drill towards third. And there's Tian for the third out. No runs on a hit, and they'll strand him. Quick look at Ozzie Guillen looking up. You can sort of feel that hunger first and foremost, making sure his staff can do their part. Pitch on the way. Hard ground at a short. One away now. It's going to be Knicks now. One for two in the ballgame. One out, nobody on. The first pitch. That swung on, line towards the gap in left center. And this rolls all the way to the wall. There's the throw. He's safe without a play. He's going to try for three. And not stopping there. He's heading home. And there it is, an inside the park home run. Wow. Boy, he showed us something there in the hustle department. Hit knocks in a run. Let's take a look at our Pepsi WPA chart. Well, he makes it all the way home. You see this so seldom. It is an inside the park homer. Well, I thought all along it's going to be a triple, but no, he didn't let up. He turned on the Jets around third base, and he makes it in safely. Now, Gary, White Sox couldn't be happier right now. They've gotten the hits they needed. They've taken the lead. They're looking to add on more, hoping to end up winning this game. Damon swings and misses for strike one. And Steve, the bullpen celebrating a little bit. They did their job, and now the run put up that gives the pen a chance to have a win. Well, I tell you, you love going to the plate with a chance to be the hero, and he was the hero right there. Great job. Johnny Damon on a swing and a miss. That's going to be strike three. Well, look at the tail on that ball right there. Look at the movement. 90 miles an hour. Lexi Ramirez. The pitch. Swings and misses at the fastball. 0 and 1. He just rears back and throws this one. A little something extra on it. No chance of putting it in play. Flied to right. And the side's retired. Kearns catches it. He'll head in. So they pick up a run on the home run, and that gives them the lead. The White. It's going to be Laporta now. Two for three thus far. Number seven. And Laporta. And here's the first one. Fastball just misses. 1-0. I think right now, when you're up by a run in the seventh inning, you've shortened the game. You've got the lead. Swung on, grounded towards the hole. And he'll be tagged out along the first baseline. Chu into the batter's box. Shinsu Chu is a type of hitter that can carry a team. He led the Cleveland Indies in 2009 with 86. He's also a very good right fielder with an unbelievable arm. One out, nobody on. Here's the first pitch. Hit on the ground over to shortstop. Now it's two away. And Johnny Peralta in. Bounced into a fielder's choice his last time. It's hit foul by Peralta. Burley gets that important strike going to oh, two out here in the seventh inning. You need to make a play behind your pitcher. He's going to pitch to contact. Somebody's got to step up, make the play, get the out, and then get back in there and see if you can score some runs and add on to your lead. Catches the strike zone. Johnny Peralta out of there on K's. And they aren't able to get anything going in this half inning. Three up, three away. The White Sox six, Indians five. And Paul Canerco to bat. First baseman, number 14, Paul Canerco. He delivers. First pitch is high, but he went after it on one. Well, climbing the ladder on him right there, he just throws that fastball right by him up in the zone. Hit sharply towards the hole. 
And that hit streak will continue as that one gets through. Now Let's take a second to view the, the top Chicago overall Rays. power hitters in the league on the State Farm leaderboard. That's some big time power hitters right here. Some guys that look to drive the ball out of the ballpark and swing hard in case they hit it. When they make contact, they can do some serious damage. First pitch to Quinton. Taps this one foul to the right. Here's the pitch. Well, maybe he needs a little vision clarity here. That one he went after, and it was clearly in the dirt. That one misses. It gets away from the catcher. So they can't make the play. Well, listen, it's all about advancing base runners in the game. You've got to make plays defensively, but that error cost him. And he Swing and a miss. Gets away. He's heading for first. Oh, and he got him. What a throw. He gets the play at first base. And Gary, as soon as the pitcher lets go of the ball, he knows what can happen in this situation. He's hoping his catcher can stop it and get the out in time. Great heads up play. There's a big two right there. And Beckham's in the box. He picked up 11 hits. Good number. 19 at bats last season off the Indians in Cleveland. Here's the delivery. Hot shot towards the hole. You're out number two. Players with the most extra base hits around the league. It's courtesy of State Farm. Alex Rios has been in these situations before and gotten the job done. Let's see if he can get it done again. No hits yet, but he'll get another chance right here. And he starts Rios out. Swings and misses the good change right there on one. Well, you talk about a guy who just corkscrewed himself into the ground. Bad timing. That's a foul ball. And Alex Rios has struck out a big swing and a miss. They pick up no runs on one hit and leave a man at second. And here are the... Manny Actor we're looking at. He knows he's going to have to get more innings like that last one and have some production to tie this one up. Pretty Garcia is going to be pitching. The White Sox turning to a reliever here. Well, it's not surprising they're going to the bullpen now. It's, I just thought maybe they waited a little bit too long. Should have gone and gotten them a little bit earlier. Hit hard on the ground to short. And the tying run is on. We talk about a guy who's swinging it right now as good as anybody. That's his third hit of the ball game thus far. Let's see if this can mount a rally with nobody out. And the first pitch. First pitch way out of the zone. Ball one. Well, you go to the eighth inning right here, and I've seen game getting much shorter here. Two innings left in this one, and you've got the one. That one is hit well. Quentin's there. One away. Now batting for the Cleveland Indians. Right fielder, number 25. Here is Austin Kearns. Garcia gets set and delivered. He swings on that 0-0 delivery, misses the fastball. Strike one. One out right here in the eighth inning. Obviously a critical time of the game right now as we're getting short. Offensively, they need extra bases. They need a double. Get in scoring position. Get a triple here. Get yourself in a position where maybe a productive out scores a run. And it holds at 0-2. Back up the middle. Picks it up. That retires Kearns. Too late, and he is safe at second. Take a look at the teams who have been hitting with runners in scoring position. Brought to you by State Farm. Number one, the White Sox. Second, the Yankees. The Blue Jays third. Fourth, the Red Sox. And number five, the Indians rounded out. Well, with runners in scoring position, these two teams absolutely excel. So if you're pitching against these teams in this game. Now here's a grounder towards the hole. And he'll step on first to retire the side. There's some more good work on the mound, Freddie Garcia. And it'll be the White Sox. We got the bottom three in the lineup due up. Leading it off, A.J. Krasinski. Catcher, number 12, A.J. Krasinski. And the first pitch. Here's one hit very well deep. That one a one hopper off the wall. And the throw not in time way ahead of that play. 
Pizinski towards third base. And here's Pizinski heading home. And there it is, an inside the park home run. Wow. Boy, he showed us something there in the hustle department. Check out the wheels on this guy. You've got to have those wheels if you're going to end up at home. Well, there's no question about it, but you also need some help from the defense, and the defense had a letdown there that allowed an inside the park home run. White Sox lead expanding here. Gary, they just keep getting big hits. Here's the pitch. It's 0-1 as he swings and misses at that fastball. Now this lead's starting to look a whole lot better when the other team's only got three outs to work with. Now especially because when you get the lead and the home run is a part of it, it's just it's a punch in the gut to the opposition. That one swung on its line. And well, Blaina makes the play. It's going to be Nicks now. He homered back in the seventh inning of this game. And here's the first one. That fastball gets by him on the first pitch, 0-1. He hit just 185 last year against the Indians here in Cleveland. Valbuena on to first. That's out number two. Left fielder number eight. And Saul Rivera is the pitcher as they make the pitching swap. Well, go to the bullpen right here. That's his chess move. Let's see if it's checkmate. First pitch on the way. Ball is blasted. High, deep, center field. Way back there. Gone a home run. Putting a little padding on the lead. Solo shot up by three. Well, okay, there's not a lot of guys playing today that can hit one that far and straight away center field. Williams once asked McGuire, do you smell it burning when you do that? I think there was some uh, wood burning on that one. Coming to bat. Now, Gary, this well, offense has just been in control right here. Extending the lead, going to make it Alexi much more difficult Ramirez. to catch him later. And Ramirez settles in, first pitch. Swing and a miss on the cutter, 0-1. You never get enough, but it certainly doesn't hurt to extend the lead like this. Well, stranger things can happen, but it's going to be an uphill climb for them to come back now. You're Swing out. and a miss. Three strikes, and Alexei Ramirez is set down. So they get the long ball working as they have two solo homers in this half of the inning. White's up. Yeah, it's Grady Sizemore in the box now. Got a couple of hits, four trips to the plate. Grady, Sizemore. Garcia gets set and delivers. Fastball swung out and missed. 0 and 1. I think right now they're looking to get a couple guys on and see if they can't get somebody to hit one out of the ballpark right here. So he makes contact. Line drive. Back I'm able to pull that one in. Two outs remaining in this game. You're up by three runs. I think right now you just want to make plays. Don't walk anybody and catch the ball. Get out. Straight outs for runs. And Cabrera settles in. His average last year, 260 against the White Sox. No balls, one strike. Here's Garcia. And Cabrera's got himself a hit. Well, a guy that just continues to swing the bat well in this ball game. Three hits right now so far. And it comes with one out in the inning. Can it start a rally? And the first pitch. Pauses and now the 1-0. This one's grounded foul wide of first. Foul fastball. Now the count one and two. Oh, it's a quality fastball right there. Just pounding the strike zone down and away. He had swung on, grounded towards the hole. And that gets through. The tying run will come to bat. Well, anytime you're a hitter and you can get three hits in a game, you're going to see that average start creeping up to where you want it to be. And he's on now with one out. And he starts Chew out. Oh, that misses inside. 1-0. In this matchup, lifetime, one for three off Freddie Garcia. 
Garcia gets set and delivered. Fastball misses badly. He's behind 2-0. Well, that's the pitch you want for the ground ball out, that two-seam fastball at the bottom of the strike zone. Just couldn't quite catch the plate. Good eye by the hitter. Comes set. Here's the 2-1 pitch. And a beauty on the outside corner. Evens things at two. Hit sharply towards the hole. There's one. And they get it. They turn two. A good all-around effort, Gary, by the White Sox today allows them to get the win. They've got to be feeling pretty good about themselves. Chance now to present our Pepsi Clutch Performer. Talk about a great game. Look no further than Johnny Dan. Well, anytime you hit a home run in a game, it's a big deal. But when you hit two home runs to help your team to a victory, that is one of the best days you can ever have. And a performance like this feels really good. And Steve, they're able to put this one away in the record books. It's a good victory. Hey, anytime you can go on the road and beat another major league team, you've got to consider yourself fortunate. This is Gary Thorne with John Crockett and Steve Phillips. Hope you had a great time as good as we did. Then you're all set. See you next time.